Deontay Wilder started his career by knocking out his first 32 opponents. One time, at an ESPN promotional event, he knocked out a burrito mascot and said that he thought there would be more cushion. Deontay Wilder is so powerful, he once knocked out a guy without even touching him. Ten years later, upon losing his first fight ever, guess who Deontay hired to be his lead trainer? Yeah, that guy. Somewhere along the line, Deontay's career went off the rails. Physically, he lacks sound boxing technique, and mentally, well, let's just say he blamed his only loss on being poisoned. Somewhere out there, there's an alternate universe, a universe where Deontay didn't fall in love with his right hand, or hire a former KO victim as his head coach, and this is that universe. In this series, we're going to rebuild Deontay Wilder from the ground up in Fight Night Champions career mode. Here's why you won't want to miss this series. First, I've turned up the AI's intelligence to 100. I've also turned up the boxer power and physical damage meters almost to 100. This assures that when punches land, they'll actually count, just like in real life, which leads me to my next point. Every fight, instead of just ruthlessly looking for power shot, I'm going to treat it as if I'm actually Deontay Wilder in that ring, and I'm going to implement the strategies that us fans have been saying that he should implement for years. I'm importing all of the real fighters that were already in the game in addition to the following created fighters. James Tony, Michael Moore, Andy Ruiz Jr., Victor Drago, Tyson Fury, Biggie Smalls, Chuck Liddell, Ken Norton, Curtis 50 Cent Jackson, Henry Cooper, and like I said before, all of the boxers that are already in the game. I also scroll down to light heavyweight, and I get Logan Paul and Tommy Fury, along with Andre Ward, just in case they ever choose to move up. All right, now let's get started with the career mode. After a solid amateur career, Deontay's coach has entered him into an amateur tournament. If Deontay wins this tournament, he will earn his coach's blessing in turning pro. For the purposes of this video, we're only going to watch the last two fights of this tournament. Please note that the difficulty gets much harder once you turn pro, so these amateur fights are not a real representation of the competition in career mode. After knocking out his first two opponents, Deontay takes on Eric Andrews in the semifinals. Alright, so as we start this fight, remember my intention is to fight how we all think Deontay should fight in real life. Right here, you see me doing just that. I'm sticking the jab to the body and the head. And right there, I follow up with a beautiful combination. If you missed that, what I did is I tapped a jab to the body. Then I went with the same hand, a lead left hook up top, and I used the power modifier. In this game, especially on the hardest difficulties, they'll reward you when you not only switch up your combinations, but when you switch up where you use your power modifier. So right here, you see me get a little overzealous. I'm throwing the 2-3-2 two, two combination. I'm going hard against the ropes, trying to get that quick knockout, get into the finals match quick and easy. There you see a rear uppercut, left hook combination. That's a great combo to use when you're on the inside. And then again, I do that same jab to the body, except this time I go with a regular rear straight up top. No power modifier needed. And... And right here you see me pause the game and check the settings to make sure that it is indeed on not only the greatest of all time, but that the computer offense awareness and defensive awareness is turned all the way up. In case you're thinking, hey, maybe the power modifiers are a bit too strong, I tested this out on the hardest difficulty with real boxers, not in career mode, and it works out great every time. And as you'll see later in this career mode, it's actually just that they make the amateur fights too easy. It's not that I have the power turned up too high. Scheduled for four, this one is expected to be a thriller. When you list all the intangibles, topping that list is what he has. Green's without a loss in his career. Yeah, that zero means that he just hasn't learned how to do that, how to lose. And he doesn't want to begin tonight. The Brown Bombers showing that walking stick right now, utilizing the jab.
Eddie, what do you look for early on when you're analyzing a fight of two power punchers facing off against each other that gives you a clue as to which way this is going? Who's doing the little things a little bit better? Who's using the jab? Who's controlling range? Hey, who's thinking better? Nice blocks by Green. Scores up top with a left. How about that right hand by the Brown Bomber? Able to get away from that headshot with the block. All the eyes are on him to start this round. Green's legs look just a little shaky, but keep in mind, he barely survived that last round. No, but keep one other thing in mind. I agree with you, Joe, but he's been here before. He's very experienced. If anyone knows how to get out of this, he does. The Brown Bomber's right hand did a nice job that time. That worked well for him. Well, I don't know if he's hip to the idea of becoming a counter puncher, but I get the sense you'd agree with it. Yeah, definitely. I mean, he's got the perfect platform, the perfect form for it. The guy's walking in right now, not moving his head much. He can time him. He can counter him. to improve that accuracy, missed with the headshot. How about that left hand? Reeves hurt by a superb hook. He is not in good shape. He could be on the deck in moments. Solid weight going here this round, and he goes down. Can he survive it? One, two, three, four. And has the sense of a flash knockdown there. You can see he's not too damaged. His opponent better be careful. He's still got a live guy opposite him. Oh, yeah, he definitely does. And believe me, the best indicated that he didn't really hurt him. His opponent's not coming after him. He knows that he's okay. He knows that that wasn't one of those big shots that really debilitates a guy. This is a key. One for you now, he says. Right back with the left hand. Solid right by Green. Green's got to prove a few things here. Number one, he's got to prove to his opponent that he's on good ground after being knocked down in the last round. But he's also got to prove it to the referee, too. Yeah, he does. And his corner. Because his corner, I just noticed, they put that towel over their shoulder. So they know the condition their fighter's in. They know their responsibility. And they're ready to act on it. A well-placed left hand up top. Shot returning fire. Well done by the Brown Bomber. That's a big uppercut that just crashed home. Keep your hands up. Move, move. Three stumbled back. He just got hurt. Oh, he's hurt right there. He is hurt. Go in this kind of situation. Big shot there. Oh, and he goes down again. The question is, can he rise up and continue on? never hurt does it with the hook oh he's hurt he was hurt right there but now he's grabbing on green stunned and he is hurt did you see that what a hook to the body and he is down and in bad shape For Deontay's first professional fight, his manager has chosen Ariel Gomez. Let's be honest, this is a fight for Deontay to get comfortable in the ring without wearing headgear. Nobody expects the opponent to win, much less even put up a fight. It's every boxing promoter's dream. Let's take a look at how I decided to train Deontay to level up before this fight.
you'll see that I went with athletic training all three times, and this is mainly so I could increase his toughness. In the beginning of Fight Night Champion's career mode, it's extremely easy to get stunned, so I'm trying to nullify that by improving his toughness right off the bat. You'll also see me increase his strength by plus 11, the maximum amount, and that's because it's Deontay Wilder. We want him to be strong and true to form. Lastly, you'll see me go back to improve his toughness by plus 5 once more. For all of the other fights, I'm going to let Teddy Atlas and Joe Tessitore do the commentary. However, there's no commentary team in your first career fight, so I'll take their role for now. Alright, so as the fight begins, you'll see me right off the bat, I'm implementing the stepping jab. Now, I don't know if this makes me stupid or not, but when I played this game for the longest time, I would first step and then implement or input the jab after the step is completed. And what I found out recently is it's actually much more effective to literally input the step and the punch at the same time. So that re what that results in is you flicking your left stick and your right stick at the same time. It's a little bit more mentally taxing, but it has a better result. And you'll see me using these stepping counters and jabs throughout the fight. I also, I especially like to step into the jab. I feel like that, that brings me back to the days, you know, training boxing at the gym. It's one thing to throw that jab, it's a, another thing to really step into it. And by flicking your left analog stick, like you just saw me do right there, I'm able to step into my jab. Now, if I recall correctly, this fighter was a much more uh, defensively it, he prioritizes defense much more than attacking, so it made making this fight an action-packed fight, it made it a bit difficult. But I'm trying to stay true to what Deontay would need to do in real life, which is implement that jab, try to bait his opponent into making a mistake, and hopefully I'll, I'll pro I will capitalize on that soon. By the way, what do you guys think I should do with my trunks? Should I rock the um, his most recent trunks? Hey which he wore against Tyson Fury. They were basically all black with just his name in gold. Or is there another fight that you want me to go back to? All right, let's get back to trying to um, announce what I'm doing here. So one thing I didn't show you before is that I was given 750 XP, and I decided to put that all towards his straight right, which made me able to get to that first, or I guess the second level, of straight right. Which is that it what that means technically for the game is that it produces a stun, what is it, five, ten percent of the time that it lands, I forget the exact number. Alright, so Deontay just made it through his first professional round as a boxer. He's landed some jabs to the body. And now hopefully we'll start to have more opportunities to land that straight right up top. Now just because we're not gonna overuse the straight right like respectfully Deontay tends to do in real life, we are still looking to land it, especially in the beginning portion of this career mode. Right now it's literally our only weapon, and right there you see me get a nice one-two up top as the opponent starts to open up more. Right here I'm going with combinations that are that come from different angles. So you see me going a common one you'll see throughout on my playthroughs is a rear straight lead left hook followed by a rear straight. I'm trying to come from different angles. That's what UFC 3, UFC 4 taught me. So right here, what I'm trying to do is just plot out my jab, just as I was saying and it happened. It made him respond to the jab, and that's where the counter opportunities present itself. I'm not sure if I'll do this here, but uh, really... And I wouldn't say it's easy, but I like to do it in this game, is you throw a jab, and then you do a pull counter right after. It's the, the bread and butter for Floyd Mayweather, and it works great in this game. But you need to throw your initial jab from the proper distance. Um, this way, when your opponent moves in for his strike, you're able to just move your head back and land a straight right. Um, you'll definitely see that in this career mode. Whether or not I do it in this fight, I forget. right here I'm trying to get my distance down you see me putting my I notice in this game when you leave your guard down it's more likely that your opponent's gonna throw punches if I were to press R2 right here put my guard up my opponent likely would not be throwing these punches so if you're wondering you know am I getting cocky why am I leaving my hands down it's to try to entice him so I could counter him
you know, a big priority for me in this playthrough is if we get a nice lead hook right hand and I go back to the well. It all gets blocked, but hey, sometimes that's how it works. A big priority is for me to, I should say, uh, prioritize a simulation style. So just like in real life, even Deontay, knowing that he can knock this dude the fuck out, he's not going to just go in there and throw, you know, haymakers nonstop. Or, actually, he did do that sometimes. But, you know, for the most part, they still do implement, you know, boxing strategy. They don't just go balls to the wall. And that's what I'm trying to work on here. It makes it hard when the opponent doesn't throw punches, but that won't be the case in future fights. There we go. Right here you see me sidestepping some punches real nice. I should have threw a counter there, but oh well. We go with the Mike Tyson bob and weave. I gotta start utilizing that a bit more. There's some sloppy punches there. We have a nice head weave, step to the right, straight hand that just happened like five seconds ago. I'm, I'm late on announcing it. Joe Rogan's job is hard. Not as easy as it looks. He works a nice counter there. He sidesteps my straight, responds with his own. But right there, that's what's going to be, that's what's going to end the show. That step back, left hook. And then we just scream, bomb squad! As we finish him off there, right when you saw me do the step back, left hook, that, the step back jab, and the step back lead uppercut, very powerful counters in this game. Because it's your lead hand, you're stepping back. I don't know, it just works out nicely. 